Alright, hey guys, it's me, Father Michael. Welcome to uh, just some updates. I'm going to give a little bit, be kind of a Bible blitz without Father Richard. Father Richard's out of town right now. I'm actually in Tallahassee. I'm at my parents' house. Um, my mom just had this room painted. So uh, if you see Mama Jean Nixon, tell her that how great this looks. She shows out some shows some great colors. Uh, but I'm, I'm here in Tallahassee. I'll be back uh, tomorrow evening, Saturday evening. Um, but we are actually, uh, tomorrow is the one-year anniversary for my family, a real sad, uh, sad anniversary, uh, one-year anniversary of my, Sean, my brother Sean's death. Um, so we'll be running a race tomorrow together as a family, um, a trail run here in Tallahassee. And uh, so that will be a, uh, yeah, just a good, good opportunity. Um, and uh, yeah, so pray for us, definitely, you know, you know all those who, who know when you've lost someone and you have those those birthdays and anniversaries, it has a uh, special, uh, special impact. Uh, but I uh, so just wanted to share some cool things that are going on right now in the parish, um, including, uh, so uh, I'll talk a little bit about the readings this weekend, but something we're going to be doing here coming up soon is uh, we're going to do a nine-day novena of adoration leading up to the Feast of Pentecost. So we're already kind of looking towards the end of the Easter season um, and into uh, into the Feast of Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, the birthday of the church. So what we're going to do is starting on May 26th, after the 10 a.m. Mass, so that's a Thursday, and that's that's traditionally when we'd celebrate Pen, um, Ascension Thursday, the, really the Thursday of the Great Commission, and then Jesus ascends to the Father. Because after that, for nine days, the apostles with the Blessed Mother spent nine days in prayer in the upper room in Jerusalem, praying for the coming of the Holy Spirit. And then on Pentecost Sunday, they're inundated with the Holy Spirit. They're clothed with power on high and then sent out into the world to preach the gospel. So we're going to spend nine days of perpetual adoration in the church. We have an adoration chapel um, uh, at St. Dominic, and it's not manned perpetually right now. We want to get back to that eventually, but we definitely want these nine days to be a time we'll have continuous hours of adoration, at least two people every hour of the day. Um, and then, we'll, of course, we'll repose during times of mass and, and things like that that happen inside the church. Um, but we're going to begin signups for that soon, so just be on the lookout for that, and we'll be sharing that out um, and to have a sign-up genius uh, uh, for that, to have every hour of the day. So that's that's 24 hours a day, seven days a week for, for nine days, um, from Thursday after the 10 a.m. Mass all the way to um, the next week, which is Saturday the 4th, uh, which will lead into the, the Vigil Mass that evening, which is the Vigil of Pentecost. So something cool that's going on. Um, and really, we're, we're praying for for the world. Uh, something that's come up. Some people have have shared some some messages of of people wanting to protest at Catholic churches around the country um, this weekend, which is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there, um, because of the uh, uh, the the work that the church has done on behalf of women and babies, unborn babies, um, in this country, working against abortion and. Uh, uh, we right, know right now in the, in the Supreme Court that there is uh, uh, word and, and who knows all, all the, the, the levels of this and, and, and how it's all going to shake out, but of the Supreme Court overturning Roe versus Wade, um, Casey uh, versus uh, Planned Parenthood, Planned Parenthood versus Casey, um, two landmark Supreme Court decisions, um, and you know that that legalized abortion um, up to the ninth up to the ninth month. And uh, have paved the way for uh, millions and millions of children to be uh, killed in our country, and for millions and millions of women and families to be hurt by abortion. We know women deserve better than that, and we, as a Catholic Church, as members of the Church who, who believe in the, the sanctity and dignity of human life from conception to natural death, we're called to defend the rights and dignity of each and every human person to stand with women, especially those in crisis pregnancies, those who've been hurt by abortion, to know that God loves you, wants to forgive you, bring healing into your life, uh, but also too that that no child uh, deserves abortion, no. Child child deserves to have their, their life ended that way and every child deserves a home and so it's something that particularly if, if this if this stands uh, this stands up we pray that it does um, that we as as Catholics as followers of Jesus can be even more intentional about standing up for life um, and uh, and and also opening our homes and, and, and hearts and everything for the uh, for the protection of, of, of uh, oh man I got dogs in the house now um, protection of, of, of women and babies. So I just want to say a quick thing. And as, as oh, here's Lenny. Here's Lenny. There's Lenny um, making an appearance in the video. Um, just a quick thing about just the readings for this weekend as well, because we, we continue with uh, the Acts of the Apostles, but then also uh, the, the book of Revelation. 
And we see here the persecution that really unfolds, um, persecution against uh, Paul and, and Barnabas, that, that, that they turn into uh, getting rejected by their own uh, brothers and sisters, the Jewish people. They, say, they, they, they don't stay in this negativity, but they allow that to say, okay, we're going to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. And then also we see those who have suffered uh, for Jesus as martyrs, um, which has happened all throughout the world. And if we face any sort of persecution or suffering, as it's, it's small compared, compared to what the martyrs are, are facing here in this country, um, those who face it throughout the world. But in a sense, praise God for it, because uh, the martyrs stand before the throne of the Lamb, and they pray with and for us, and they've been clothed in the blood of the Lamb, and, and that's one of the things we experience. And then, of course, Jesus says those simple words, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me, um, and no one can take them out of my hand. So to listen for the voice of God. We have so many competing voices that that, that, um, that manifest themselves to us. And so it's really important, I think, as followers of Jesus to, uh, to make sure that we're listening to his voice and his voice which speaks peace, which speaks conversion and healing and is the gospel, uh, the gospel of life that we are called to, uh, to be saved by. Um, so praying for you guys today. Please pray for me. Pray for my family as well. And I will see you all on Sunday. God bless.